Hey. Jack, you know, I, I take my stories to their limit. I don't know if you're, you know, I know you. <laughs> we really need to take it to the level that I've seen it in order for me to explain the answers that you're asking me. Go boldly where no man has gone before, Freeman. Really, you have a free reign on this program. All right. Thank you, Jack. Because this, this story is just simply incredible. And whether or not you're going to accept it in the end, I don't know. And I'm only putting it out there so that we keep the wonder alive that's necessary to find answers to our struggles. And the wonder comes in that we're dealing with an Illuminati bloodline. We're dealing with a, a hierarchy of people that have been incarnating on planet Earth for thousands of years, generating this new world order. Now, when we look into the bloodlines, we're looking at all of the same people. We find that McCain's related to Brittany, that Hillary's related to, to Madonna, that Bush is related to uh, Obama. And we realize that we're dealing with this aristocracy that interbreed and come down through Egypt. And you can see the Egyptianization of America by uh, the Memphis Pyramid, the, the use of an uh, obelisk as our Washington Monument, all of it going straight back to Egypt. This is why there's a pyramid on the dollar bill. So as we start to uh, understand our ancient past, when you start to look into the facts, the anomalies of our ancient past, uh, we had discussed the Inca Plains and other strange structures such as Tijuanacon, which has sheets of mica that are so large that here in the 21st century we couldn't move them, yet they were moved hundreds of miles by these uh, supposedly ancient ignorant people. And uh, what we use mica for today is of course computer technology, and if you start to look at some of these ancient structures you realize that they quite possibly are global sized computers, global sized technology. We misrepresent them as, as funerary temples and we know damn well that there's never been a body in the pyramids. So when we start looking in our ancient past we've got to understand the sophistication of the technology that existed back then. We have to suspend our control belief systems. Okay, we have to suspend what we think is natural and normal and the everyday pattern of information and the world around us to really understand what these people are after and what they have always been so interested in and what are really again our money has been funding these cloning projects uh, again you know, when we're talking about the Space War, we have multiple countries who are funded into the trillions of dollars, all up, working up into the pyramid, as I call it, uh, with, say, world government, United Nations, the various families, elite controlling families, you know, I call them the neo-pharaohs, which fits pretty good with your analysis. You know, trying to colonize space, trying to take the technology to space, because that is the ultimate controlling authority, isn't it, Freeman? I mean, we're talking about spy satellites, weaponized satellites, the, the desperation again and the fear from the individual nations that they can fall behind in this and, and be under the foot of whichever country becomes the, the leading uh, technological force in this era, in space war. But that merges, as you say, with cloning, which is also really big in the news right now, as, as we talked in our pre-interview, here we have Obama mentioning he's going to take off the handcuffs on cloning. That's right. And, and we have people that, that believe, and I think rightly so, that Obama is somewhat of a Manchurian candidate who has been groomed for the position. But you're taking this to a whole new level, Freeman, and that is elites. The neo-pharaohs have gone back into their ancestry, and we know how they... We know how they worship Egypt. Just, just when we watched the invasion of Iraq, all of the artifacts from Babylon were raided from the museums. Never found again. No one punished for that. This type of, of worship back into the elite uh, bloodline ancestry is something that I think is really provocative, and I'm very interested in it. But what you're saying at the end of the day here is that not only was Obama groomed through his mother at the Ford Foundation and all the things we know but he was literally created in a test tube from the ancestors back in Egypt well I'm just gonna state that there are still court cases in battle to state that Obama is not a natural born citizen and that with this investigation we find that uh, he cannot prove where he comes from now 
Maybe it is that he's just trying to hide his uh, Kenyan roots. Maybe he did come from Hawaii. I know I'm required to bring my damn Social Security card to the pol to the driver's license office, but our president doesn't need to give a birth certificate. But that is because potentially he's not hiding the fact that he's not a U.S. citizen and therefore is constitutionally limited from being the president. And we've called him. Uh, the alleged president, the usurper, Cousin Barry, all the things on this program, but that, in effect, he might be hiding the fact that he was born in a laboratory somewhere, cloned from ancient Egyptians. you got to be willing to go to this state. You've got to understand the levels that we're at today. When you start to recognize that uh, you know, Dr. Soros is offering cloning to people, when you realize that the Raelians were speaking before Congress about human cloning almost a decade ago that this has been a topic that we can't ignore. It is a big topic right now and the idea of the stem cell research and the extended life that is a very big deal and you know they're going to hold that away from us. You know they're going to keep that. Well, And you mentioned the Raelians who allegedly had done the first cloning on record and that has come into question. The documentation on that. They are kind of a kooky culty bunch and they believe in you know the UFOs and everything else. You know what was interesting about that? A couple years ago, we started analyzing George Bush's use of the word intelligent design, and we started right. Googling that, and we found that that is a Raelian term. That is absolutely Rael's book. That is the name of his book. Yes, a uh, message from the aliens, intelligent design. Uh, no doubt about it. And then, of course, their symbol is the swastika coupled with the uh, uh, Star of David. And they had to soften that symbol a bit and take the hard angles out of the swastika and turn it into more of a spiral. Uh, but their intention is to build an embassy in Israel for the Elohim to return. And the symbol that they want to put on this uh, embassy in Israel is the Star of David with a swastika in the middle and of it. The swastika, as you mentioned, it is a, a phoenix symbol from the Phoenicians. Uh, for the sun, uh, of course, giving us the uh, sun religion and the Phoenicians' direct descendants from the Babylonians and then from the Egyptians. That's the thing that always really intrigues me because we have these ancient symbols, these uh, ancient, you know, hieroglyphs, let's call them, and they're being used in corporate logos, and you've done a ton of work on this, a really great work, and as has David Icke. And it seems as if these are kind of the coat of arms of the ancient Egyptians moving through all the various elite families throughout uh, our history, it, modern history, let's call it, for the last several thousand years, and they are more prevalent today than they might have been thousands of years ago. I would say that's about true. Uh, you certainly don't have to look far to find uh, Poseidon's trident or the eye in the pyramid or uh, any number of these, you know, Columbia Sportswear Swastika, who has a dove, which is Queen Samirimus, which is the tablets that they stole out of Baghdad when they stormed with the Shachanah. Uh Yeah, it, this, is, this story needs to be looked at, and we need to recognize, because Obama now is going to have to deal with uh, the anti-gravity technology that's going to be released here real soon. And that's another one that's coming up. Cold he, fusion is being revisited now, even after they've uh, assassinated several of the people who were unlocking the keys to cold fusion. Now we're seeing that back in the news. No doubt about it. Uh, the, the technology that we have is way superior than what people expect. And so that's where we're lost. We don't know their abilities. And also, we don't understand their religion. We don't understand who these men are. We've been duped. We've been led astray because always they've locked themselves behind doors with men with swords standing there. These are the Freemasons that I'm talking about. And honestly, I, I do have a friend in the Masons who says that Obama is a... Is a, a Prince Hall Mason. No, that's going to get me letters from the good Masons. Okay, well, let's just state that uh, the Masons decided to have the first ever inauguration ball in D.C., and Obama didn't show up, so you take it as you will. Well, we, get, we do get letters from when we make... Uh kind of esoteric references to masonry and and i i know masons and some of them are, are very good people and you know it's been my i guess I, i'm working on call it a theory if you want that masonry has been speaking of usurped usurped has been superseded by higher levels of modern day secret societies and these are what we look at now today the council on foreign relations the think tanks uh, the various forms universities certainly the various forms of initiation where now 
you're getting honorary 33rd degree masonry. You're getting a 33rd degree uh, award, I guess, an initiation without ever having to go to one Masonic meeting. And I think there's a lot of people that are going to listen to this show uh, now and in the future and say, look, I'm a Mason and Masons are good. But but I think that, they, that we have shifted now from that as being a controlled secret society working through initiations to things that uh, seem a little more palatable <laughs> to the public at large, not just the American public, but the world at large, who are much more informed today than they, they used to be. It, you know, it looks, it looks so benign, doesn't it? All of this just looks so, so normal and so benign. And, and people are going to listen to a show like this and say, you're flat out, you flat out lost your mind even broadcasting something like this. But again, I mean, we have to, we have to open people up to all the possibilities. And, and one of the things I like to do on my show, Freeman, is just kind of kill these controlled belief systems the dogma, the mind control, if you will, that we have been brought up to, to check ourselves on, to self-censor ourselves on. Not only can we not say things, and that's certainly in the news, but we can't even think things.